Hi, thank you so much for joining us for City Talk. I'm Emily Lofgren, the City of Muscatine's Communications Manager, and today I have Matt Romer, and he is our PGA golf professional. Matt, thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. So, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? How long have you been in Muscatine? Um, this is my second year in Muscatine now. I've been a golf professional since 1994. And what? And have you served in a lot of different positions around the country, or have you been have. in the Midwest? I uh, have. I've I've spent a lot of time in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, a um, couple years in West Virginia. Yeah, then, what, then Illinois, and then yeah. here. So. All right. So so it's a little bit different doing golf here than it is in some of the areas that stay yes. warmer year round. It is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. How's the transition been? It's been good. It's been good. Um, we've, you know my. Muscatine Municipal is a, a nice course. Um, it's fun to play, so, and it's affordable, so it's been good. That's great. So, um, when you when you first got here, you know, how how did you start getting to know the city, and how did you um, start start managing the golf course? Uh, first, uh, when I first got here, I just you know I met the whole staff that was working at the golf course at the time. Um, just kind of met with them, kind of let them know my views and how I wanted it, the operation to the direction the operation to go in so mm -hmm. from there you know it was just to, to uh, getting around the community it was just get, getting out and doing it you know mm -hmm. I mean had you know when I moved here I didn't really know where everything was but you know now I have a pretty good sense of that so yeah and you probably meet a lot of different people and encounter people as they come to the golf course and yeah a lot yeah. of nice people yeah that's yep. great so what what's your um, your daily tasks that you do at the golf course uh, really, my, my uh, duties there at the golf course are uh, just to run the day-to-day -day operations of the golf, of golf, uh, the golf operations and food and beverage operations. Um, so I kind of have the whole, uh, the whole thing there. There's food and beverage, the golf, and then also lessons um, is a big part of it, and just trying to grow the game of golf in our community. So. Yeah. And would you say that a lot of people are interested in taking lessons when they first come out to the golf course? Yeah, I think so. Um, once they get out to the golf course and they see that it's, uh, you know, it kind of, it's not so intimidating as they think it's going to be, they kind of relax a little bit. And then from there on, it's, it's pretty, pretty nice, easy to get lessons and stuff. So. Yeah. So would you say that you generally have a lot of beginners taking lessons or people who are a little bit more advanced in their game? Really a good mix of pretty much everything. Beginners, um, intermediate players, advanced players, um, and pretty much the entire gamut of the age. I mean, from five-year-olds to 85-year-olds. So it's cool. a good mix. Yeah. Yeah, and so I've never been someone who played golf. You know, I've actually gone to the driving range a couple times at Muni. But yeah. what would you say to someone like me who is new to golf? Like, what kind of advice would you have for starting out? Uh, I would definitely say take a few lessons to make sure it's something you really want to invest because it does take some time. The sport does take up some of your free time. So I would definitely start with the lessons. Um, see if it's something that you're going to enjoy. Um, and you know something you can have fun at. So it's it's a great activity. It's a lifelong activity. Um, you know we have, like I said, we have kids out there playing at five years old, and we have some of our season pass holders are upper 80s, and they're still out there playing. So it's a great activity to get started, no matter what age you are. Uh, I would just say, first and foremost, though, find a PJ professional, get a few lessons. That way you kind of understand the game a little bit more. And they'll also go over etiquette and things like that that are also important while you're out on the golf course. So Yeah, because the average person wouldn't really have any idea of etiquette or, or right, how they're correct. supposed to, to, to just be right. while they're there. Yeah. So. So, so golf is something that even if you didn't grow up playing it, that it, it's something you can pick up. Oh, absolutely. Older. Absolutely. That's I great. started playing when I was 21. So. Wow. That's really cool that yeah. now, I mean, this is what you do for a living. And yeah. You, so. Cool. Because, yeah, I just started, always kind of thought that, you know, if you grew up playing, then that might be something that would be attainable to, oh, right. to do. But, Absolutely. But, you know, people can do it for, for fun when yep. they're older. Yep. Awesome. So how long does the outdoor golf season usually last? Uh, pretty much weather dependent. It uh, can go, uh, it can end as soon as, you know, November 1st, or it can, last year we extended it 
in the, the first week of December. So it's really weather dependent about, you know, when our season ends. But just because our golf season outdoor ends doesn't mean our actual golf ends because we have winter golf as well inside. So, so what, how do you play winter golf? What? Uh, we have a simulator. So it's uh, like um, it's actually you stand there, you hit an actual ball um, off of our, our mat into a screen that has, shows you a picture of a hole. You can play. Our simulator has like 35 different golf courses around the world that oh, you can wow. choose from to play. Um, so it's, it's very realistic and you know, a lot of fun. So. so it doesn't feel like you're just playing inside. It feels like you're really on exactly. the course. Exactly. Yes, it does. That's neat. Yep. So in addition to the great facilities that we have at Muni, they can you know, be playing inside and you know, all these courses. Yes, absolutely. It's really cool. I, think, I feel like a lot of people don't realize that. So to get in touch with you to schedule a golf lesson or, you know, to visit the golf course if they want to, you know, schedule a tee time, like they would call, I guess, up here on the screen right now. You see the... Yes, the that is our number. Off? Yep. So so if they call, they can um, talk to you or talk to someone to set up a time for a lesson? Yes. Yep. And set up right. time to play on the simulator. Um, we also have great activities if, you know, for, for instance, on Wednesdays from... 8 to 10, we have a men's coffee where we have a group of men that show up between 8 and 10 and they play on the simulator a little bit, you know, and just kind of sit around and, and, and talk and get, to, you know, it's just a fun atmosphere for them. We also do that, our women's uh, ladies coffee is a Saturday from 8 to 10 a.m., same thing. Come out, use a simulator, it's, it's free to use a simulator during the men's and ladies coffee days. Oh, um, so they can come out, have some hot chocolate, some coffee, sit around, talk, have some fun, hit a few shots in the simulator. So, yeah. And so golf is really, it seems like um, it's, it's, a, it's a sport that you can really enjoy with friends and especially in some of these activities with like the men's and ladies coffees. Yes. And, um, and it's, not, it's not just an individual thing. It exactly. Can, no, it's it not. It can be. If, it can if you be. Want to go yep. Out yep. But it doesn't have to be. No, not at all. Yeah. That's neat. So, do people generally, when they go out to play, um, are they like really competitive against each other, or? There are certain, certain few people out there that come out when they, they play in their their groups every morning. They're competitive, like to be competitive, mm -hmm. um, which is great. Also, there's a lot of people out there that, at first, if they're not familiar with uh, Muscatine, Muscatine Municipal, they kind of have that intimidation factor where man, I don't know if I can go play there or not because I don't know if it's going to be competitive or can I just go out and play and have fun. So, But once they get in the door, we make them feel at home. Um, uh, my staff is great at doing that. And once they, that first initial trip out to Muscatine Municipal, when that's over, then they see how it's friendly, inviting. And if you just want to go out and have fun, then that's great too. But yeah, if, if you're competitive and you want to compete, we have that for you as well. That's great. Yeah. Um, so, so if people want to, um, to play right now, what are the specials that you have going on? Right now we have a all day, every day, all you can play with golf cart for $25. Good deal. So you can, you know, come out in the mornings, pay your $25, get in the golf cart and play till dark. So it's a good deal. Yeah, it really is. Are there any other upcoming events happening aside from, I guess, they're, they're the weekly events with the, the coffees, but... Right, yeah, that's, that's all we have coming up in this winter time. Um, yeah. We have um, also, you know, if they go to the website, they, have, they can see our winter activities there at, at the clubhouse. Um, there will be some dates for junior clinics. Um, and then every Saturday from 10 to 10.30, uh, it's open to anybody, all ages. Um, everybody wants to come out, uh, just kind of a free half hour golf clinic on whatever they want to talk about or want me to go over and try to help them with and all that. So, and that's free as well. Great. Awesome. So, um, if, if someone wanted to, um, to come out and play the sock, you also have foot golf. Foot golf, yes. In addition to, in addition to playing traditional golf. Yes. Um, so could, could they play that at the same time as people are playing golf? Yes. Um, they call a golf shop, they make a tee time, just like a normal um, traditional golfer 
does. They get that tee time and then they just they play right along with, you know, the people playing golf. So Yeah, have you seen that take taking off this season? It's been pretty decent, yeah. There's a few times where we've had quite a few out there, so it's yeah. great. So it's another way that people can get out and use the golf course even if they're not as into traditional golf. Exactly. Wonderful. Is there anything else that you'd like people in Muscatine to know about the golf course or anything that you do? Uh, really just, you know, if, if I haven't met you or what have you, come out, introduce yourself to me, please. Um, you know, our driving range is there. You know, if you don't want to play golf, we have a great driving range. Um, that's always available to anybody. So just just know that you know you're going to be welcome to come out and enjoy our facility. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully um, all of you at home will be really interested in just stopping out and not feeling intimidated because golf golf is something that if you've never done it before, it might feel like you know it's it's tough to get started. But yeah. it's great here that um, Matt's explained that it's. It's really an easy sport to start picking up because people are friendly and welcoming, especially exactly. here in Muscatine at Muni. Yes. So, all right, now we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to have um, Jessica Rexroth and Karen T with us. Thank you. Now we have Jessica Rexroth and Karen T with us here. So, Jessica, tell us a little bit about what you do for Parks and Rec. Yeah, I am the office coordinator here at Parks and Rec. Um, I've been with the city for about five years now, and I basically am um, the point of contact, you know, the first person you're going to talk to when you're calling the office to uh, utilize any of the numerous facilities or programs and stuff like that we have going on there. Yeah, so if anybody happens to stop in, they'll probably see your face yep, first. Yes, they're probably going to see me. <laughs> yeah. In. So, yeah. Um, so, what like on your on your like in your daily uh, tasks at the office? He, so people are calling in. What do they ask you about or talk to you about? Um, well, we actually get a lot of phone calls. Um, you know, on a yearly basis, we take about a hundred um, Pearl City Station rentals, a hundred Riverview Center rentals, and about four hundred to four hundred and fifty. Uh, shelter rentals a year so that's you know at least 650 communi points of contact that you have there trying to help the citizens of Muscatine um, with their celebrations. Wow that's a lot. Yeah it really is it's awesome. <laughs> so Karen tell us a little bit about what you do. For this well I'm the program supervisor I've been um, with Muscatine Parks and Recreation Department for a little over a year now. Um, I uh, uh, was am originally from Muscatine and left for a little bit, but I've come back now. Happy to be back, um, and I run all of the um, special events and the youth and adult sports. Great. So we're going to talk a little bit more about the special events in a minute. Mm -hmm. um, but first, let's talk a little more about the rentals and all of the stuff that you're answering questions on, Jess. Okay. So, yeah. so what facilities are available for rent? So. Um, a lot of the things that you can call and reserve with us would be the shelters. We get a lot of uh, points of contact on that. Um, you can rent those, you know, majority of the year, depending on the weather. Um, the Pearl City Station and the Riverview Center are also available for rent. Uh, the two buildings on the riverfront. Those are a lot of the main ones that we do. Yeah, and um, when during the year, like, can they? Can they call ahead to reserve or like how does that work? So you can reserve um, our facilities on a one day less than a year basis. So so if you decided that on like July 7th that you wanted to have, have an event mm -hmm. um, like for the next year, you had to wait until like the 8th to yes, have it? Yes, correct. Yep. Or to call. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I guess that's what we have the, here. The next, yeah, the next business day. The business yep. Day. Okay. So and then they call. They would call you at that number two six three zero two four one. Yep, they can talk to me there. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, and so, so when people are calling, d calling the office as well, do you do you help with scheduling for other for other things besides the rentals? Uh, yeah. The other thing that I help a lot with would be Kent Stein. Um, that would be another one of the major ones that I help reserve. So, do you like working for Parks and Rec? Like how? Yeah, like, what do you I, think I love there? it. I love it. I love um, communicating with the citizens, trying to help them, you know, achieve whatever it is that they're trying to accomplish. Yeah. D did um, Parks and Rec? Did it seem different than what you thought it would be like when you first walked in the doors? 
Yeah, I, I, I didn't really know what to expect, but honestly, I love it. I laugh on a daily basis. You know, the citizens are great. It's, it's just a fun place to be. Yeah, I was actually surprised at how many things um, the Parks and Recreation Department is responsible for, you know, from like, from mowing different places in, in the city to kind of like trimming the trees to preparing different spaces. It's just amazing yes. all that goes into the department. Yeah, there is a lot of awesome things going on there. And there are uh, employees coming in and out and, yep. you know, you're interacting <laughs> with a lot of different people. Yep. I see. Great. So, Karen, since you've started with your position mm -hmm. um, a little over a year ago, I guess a year and a few months now, mm -hmm. you have been taking on the role of planning all of the different special events. Right. And that's a really big undertaking. <laughs> yep. So, I love it. It's fun. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. And the special events, what's really great, that, the thing that I like is that so many of them are free for the community. Absolutely. And so, you know, people no, aren't just being able to go to the parks to enjoy those places, and you know they're able to go to events that are really fun as right. well. Right. Yep. So, yeah. what what are some of the ones that are coming up? Soon? Well, um, our Turkey Trot is coming up this Saturday, the nineteenth. Um, it'll be out at the golf course, um, and we have the kids run starting at ten, and the five uh, k starts at ten thirty, or as soon as the frost is off of the grass. So. Um, that's um, a $20 entry fee at this point. Um, everybody would get a t-shirt. If you registered late, then you might have to wait, but you'll get your t-shirt. Um, so that's, that's what's coming up this weekend. Then on Friday, December 2nd, we have um, our candy cane hunt down on the river uh, front, um, kind of near the basketball um, courts out there. And it's a flashlight hunt. So it is at night, it is dark. Um, we separate the kids up into two groups, throw out hundreds and hundreds of candy canes, um, and then the kids use a flashlight and they just find their candy canes and then they get to keep those and the multicolored candy canes get a special little prize. Um, we usually have some cookies and juice in the Pearl City Station um, right afterwards and then they can go on with their evening and it's, it's just it's a fun family event. Um, kids, um, generally they're done doing that sort of thing at fourth grade, um, but preschool through, you know, fourth or fifth grade, so, and then on... Could I say something yes, about Yes, I'm sorry. Time, no, it's okay. Um, <coughs> I just thought it was a really cool event last year. You know, people who are going to the holiday stroll, they're able to go walk during the stroll and then come down to the candy cane mm -hmm. hunt, and that was really, that was neat to see the yeah. families are out it's enjoying the whole evening, and so that was really cool. It's, it's definitely a fun event. We get a lot of energetic kids. My kids yeah. love it. It's a great time. Jessica, yeah. that's that's one of the big events that Jessica gets to yeah. happy with. Yes, oh, that's I cool. Do. Yep. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah, and I, I had no idea how many people would be down there, and there were so many people considering it's at night in the dark, and those kids are running after those kids. There's games. probably oh, four yeah. or five hundred people, so that's that's a lot. Yeah, a lot of people. it is really cool. Mm -hmm. And then there's some great sponsors who do help provide right. flashlights and stuff. Right, yeah. right, right, yep, event. yep, yep. Musco is our primary sponsor for the flashlights, and First National Bank is also a sponsor for that event. Cool. Yeah. And then after, so um, just a couple weeks after that, though, you have another event. And we, what, what would we do? Be? We have the Elves Workshop. Um, that is on, and I don't have my calendar in front of me. It is yeah. December seventeenth. That's what I was going to say. So that's a good <laughs> guess. Um, it's at one o'clock out at the mall. Um, and we'll have crafts for the kids, now, simple little make and take crafts, coloring sheets, temporary tattoos, just kind of something that, you know, if they want to make a craft and give it to grandma and gra grandma or grandpa or mom or dad or aunt and uncle, they could certainly do something like that. Or if they just want to make it for themselves and just have some fun, that's great as well. And it's free. Um, so we do have, we do need sponsorships and um, do fundraising and things like that to help offset the cost of those things. And the mall is a huge participant in that. You know, they provide us with the space. So it's great. It's great. Gives kids a chance to get out a little bit um, and just, you know, gives parents a chance to meet each other and, and mingle and, and get to know each other a little bit better. Yeah. And, and during that time of year, people are looking for some fun things to do and right. just want to have time to with their yeah. kids. So yep. That's good. Um, so then you also are going to be having another event coming up in January, which, we, is, which is a fun one. Um, we are, yep. Um, the end of January, the last Saturday in January, we will have our uh, winter festival. 
and let's see, the last two years, I was here for last year, but not the year before, um, so we didn't have any snow. So our wonderful <laughs> maintenance um, and, and parks, park maintenance people go to wherever there's been snow and load it, truck it in, and, and it, so we can do the snow, um, I'm going to stumble over the words, snow sculpture contest, yep. and um, then the snow pile treasure hunt. Um, it's all on January 28th out at the municipal golf course, so it's another great way that we use that golf course facility. So. Um, and then we do some things inside. They'll, we'll have the simulator set up, the little kids' little putt-putt um, golf and some coloring pages. And then about 3 o'clock or so, we'll start our progressive dinner. So we'll have fire pits set up throughout the golf course, and each um, fire pit will be stationed by a group business organization. Um, and they'll just have some simple little snacks for folks um, to go you know, walk through the golf course. It's a great way to get some exercise in the wintertime when maybe it's not so easy to get out and about. People right. really like that event. They do. They like that. They do. And then it all wraps up about three or four o'clock. I'm sorry, about four or five o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's a nice afternoon and people stay for a while too. Yeah. Which is, they do. Yeah. Which is good. It's a great social thing. It really pulls people together. And with all of these events that you're talking about, there are opportunities to volunteer and to sponsor. And Absolutely. So and, it, and if anybody wants to have a station at the Progressive Dinner, the more the merrier. So give us a call. Give me a call down at the Park and Rec office. Um, it's 263-0241. Um, and um, give me a call and let me know, and we'll get things set up. Great. And so for your volunteers, you'll, I mean, they can just call as well if they want to volunteer? Yeah, yep, absolutely. Call ahead of time so we, so we know who all is going to be there, so we, everybody has a job because we don't want anybody to feel like they, they're, they're not needed because they are needed. <laughs> <laughs> yep, just coordinating all of that, yeah. you know, it takes a little time. Mm -hmm. Great. And so these are some of the things that you're working on during the winter months and when it's, as it's getting, um, getting colder. I know that you both have a lot of different tasks when it comes to the summer um, coming up with different registrations for so many different activities mm -hmm. and yeah. Oh, yeah. as well. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so Karen, what has been the, your favorite part about working for Parks and Rec? Uh, I don't know that I have a favorite part. I like it all. I like going out and meeting people and um, having fun with the kids. I like visiting with the people that come into the office that we have to help, talking to people on the phone. I like learning all the things that I didn't know that the city did before I started to work for the city. That's been very interesting as well. Yeah, it is surprising. I didn't know a lot before. There really is. Yeah, you don't realize until you're, you're in that position. Right. Yep. Yeah, or something happens and people ask and they just assume you know everything because you yeah. work for the city. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Cool. So is there anything else about about your roles for Parks and Recreation that would be good to share with people? Or um, I mean, if people are interested in having some type of event or if they ever have any questions, just call us. We're there Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. We will have an answer for you or we will um, we'll find help, an you. Answer. Yeah. <laughs> help you any way we can. <laughs> Great. Yeah. And never, you know, those of you watching, don't be shy to, to call or stop in the office. Sometime. Yeah, 563-263-0241. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and those of you watching, thank you for joining us for City Talk. And we hope to see you next week.